where this is the observed uh, speed. And the feed forward comes basically out of our control. Right? So here we have the real and the real speed. And here comes out the actual or the actual speed. And this will be basically the force that we put on the uh, on our plant, so that will be our feed bar, right? Here we have our feedback control, whatever we choose. Right, and then That would be our lunar star observer. Let's get to cascaded control. Cascaded state and cascaded control. <coughs> and uh, let's do um, the same as we did in lesson two. The electrical machine. Plus omega L I G. 
and we're growing mechanical system. Where T minus T L equals J D omega T. So this we basically already did, right? We already did a current control on homework three. We talked about it here. The only thing we don't have, and in homework I did leave this out on purpose because it would be a little bit. I don't want to use the approximation that everyone is doing for this. This looks a little bit different than the most papers, so that would be something that you should learn some at a different point. So we leave this out, okay? They're cross coupling for now. We assume it's not there. And our differential equation for the homework also, we built the differential equation ourselves, we just leave it out. We assume it's not there. Because I don't want you, I, I don't want to teach you something that I don't personally think is a good idea. Because it's only got L as a decoupling will look very different in continuous domain. And the math is just too much right now for you, for your homework at least. But you should have a look at it later on how you actually decouple it. You can try it to decouple it with an omega L term, but you will see it depends on the, it should depend on your sampling time, what the signal actually looks like. Now that you played a little bit with Z domain, it will never look like this, right? It probably looks different. So, there is a paper of mine that explains this, so if you want to, you can have a look at it. There are other papers out there by Digna, by Greens, by Lorenz, by Christian van der Broek, and all of them try to basically also do this for uh, discrete domain and yeah have a look at it at some point but not for the homework just yet so we leave it out we assume it's not there it's part of our disturbance game okay um, but for this differential equation we already designed our control so that will be our interview right um, and what we did in continuous domain, we make this fast, right? And then this will be our input with this gain as a torque modulator, and we do this. Yeah. Right, and we're still in this domain. So we have to still include a latch, right? So what we now assume is, and there's different ways of assuming this, and the first order is assumption would be we still have. The latch input for our torque. We basically tell our torque what it is for the outside control and we'll reach it within a step. This is only true if it's so fast that it actually looks like a step. In real life, we probably, if it's on dead, um, it probably will look a little bit like this. Okay? So, But as a first order of approximation, we assume it's a latch. We get to the other one later on. But this will be pretty, pretty good. You will see this in your homework, this is a pretty good approximation, but you can get a better approximation if you have to. And it really depends on how far the toss are apart and what is the relationship of T over to and all that. Right? Um, and our equation basically looks like this. One of J, one of rest. And we get our speed. We sample it. And this will be the bottom. So we can do the same thing again to get our NSTFZ as we did before. Our NSTFZ will now be 1 minus 1 minus z to the minus 1 uh, z transformation. Uh, 1 over j s times 1 over s, right? So 1 over j s squared. And we use our tables, and it's very simple. 1 over s squared is actually will look like time wave accumulation, uh, time uh, over t minus 1. So this becomes t over j z to the minus 1 over 1 minus z to the minus 1. Where? And this 
basically cancels and our NS2 becomes for omega right? becomes t over j v to the minus 1 over 1 minus v to the minus 1. So right on the back I see this we could actually approximate with rectangle. It literally looks the same. So, also a hint. Here, it's actually exactly, this is also a one over S, right? But now it looks like rectangular. So, don't mistake, or don't, never think that there's an integration model. It totally depends on your system. Here, the integration looks like this. And uh, once you have the state feedback and all of that, it looks totally different. So really make sure that you don't just think that there's an integration problem. There is no integration problem in this human being. There's a central relationship and it depends on the energy flow and it depends totally on the system how this will look like. Okay? And now we get to this user, right? We have this NSDOZ, so we know what this will look like. And and now with the correct model we can design the feedback control. Okay, so I basically, in this approximation of the ledge, I assumed we have an actual ledge, right? But what if we actually have a ledge like this? Or the behavior of this, of this ledge over there is more like an exponential. Then we start to have, this is missing, right? So this would be some, this power would be missing. And at that point, we really have to make sure we include this. So, our old latch, basically, the old latch that we used, was basically this, right? We said it's a step of our input and then a delay and negative, and so that basically does this. With the height of one and it multiplies it with whatever our uh, command is. If we have this with the likely exponential power behavior, we use an exponential power latch and we make this. Thank you. 
this space. If you can pick up, I'll, I'll be right here. It'll be easy. And that's just what the table uh, gives us. It looks way longer now, but it includes now the actual PT1 behavior. So this, um, and if you put this in now for example of the up here and put it in the right format, you should get a new NSD of the beat. that looks hopefully a bit taller. So that would be your new system dynamics, including uh, the PT1 of the latch. Okay, so you now have one more pole and uh, you also have a zero more. As you see in your homework, you can use the normal edge approach. Okay? But if you at some point find that that's not a good approximation anymore, you know how to dig deeper, okay? Then try to use the uh, exponential power edge. And that totally depends on your bandwidth and on the T over tall. Do you have questions on this? Should we reiterate on this? I don't have any questions. Anyone? I mean, this, this, this should be clear, right? This is really simple to have this approach. The power one, it's just algebra. Um, but if it doesn't make sense, also feel free to ask right now. But Can you show us how to do it by command in Macbook? How to what? By command with MD3 spies in Macbook by C2B or something then with different methods. I didn't quite get this, sorry. So in Macbook, yeah. not normally if we do uh, the view model, we don't do a lot of compilation like this, but we do it in Macbook for... So are you, you're saying how we do this here, the math in Macbook? Yeah. 
I mean, you can't solve it symbolically. I usually use uh, other programs like MadCat or MadMaple to solve these. I don't use MATLAB for it. You can use MATLAB with symbolic toolbox. Uh, but usually MATLAB is more a numerical, so it's more meant for numerical solutions, not analytical solutions. Uh, so I would recommend other uh, programs, but you certainly can do it. I use Maple. Uh, yeah. Which one? Maple. Maple. Or Mat MATCAD is fine. There's multiple math tools that you basically just, it can solve all of these for you. But it's a good practice to do it once yourself, and then you know, or you also already know what it should sort of look like, and then you can test your, uh, the math with Maple as well. Mm -hmm. Because you do code it as well, right? So you might do an error in your coding. But you can do little class transformations, you transformation, everything in Maple. So to get really like complicated models of, for instance, resonant stuff and so on, I will do the math myself because these here still look like I can do it in a table, but once the whole thing starts with sign bonkers and all these different weird things, if it's like a little bit higher order, uh, you will start to be, it will be real difficult to do it on paper. At that point you might want to, but then you know how to do the math and then you only have to operate the computer. When you don't know the math, and put, like you know what I'm saying, you should also already know what what the process is before uh, just trying to use the program. Because you're the one who did debug it, so you have to know what it's supposed to do. Michael, I have one question. I'm so like, can we uh, separate a big uh, system, like high order system, to a smaller cascade uh, type of function? And then we do the grid style for each small one. Um, so you can parse these if, you, if that's what you're saying. I mean, uh, like for example, you have high order uh, frame function in S donor. Yeah. And then you can separate it to cascade one. Yeah. Or parallel one. And then we the grid style for each small one. This. Less the problem is so. The problem is right. So you basically send here the transfer function of S, for instance, here, and you parse it right into different transfer functions of S. Yeah, yeah. So the problem is here you have the latch. So you can get the NSD of Z to here, right? Then you have this NSD of Z. And then you have this state. Let's say this is y1 and this is y2. Yep. Right? So you can get y1 of z for this. And that's your x input. But, and I can get the new system dynamics of this. And I can also say that x and new system dynamics, let's call this 1 and 2, reaches y2. But how do I know what this between these? You can only get it by parsing. So if you look at the two of them, and they might have something in common for it, uh, and parsing, I don't want to do the whole math on parsing, but let's say an STLC is t over 1 minus z to the minus 1, and this here is z to the minus 1 times t times 1 minus z to the minus 1. Then it's pretty clear that between this and this is just the z to the minus 1. So I can parse it this way. I know that t1 minus z to the minus 1 is state 1. And I also know the whole thing times z to the minus 1 is 2. Right? And I also know that this is the template relationship between the two of them. So you can parse it, but you cannot do this z domain, this z domain. You can only do from here to here. Hmm. Because you have to include the latch. But that is possible. You can do these two and then parse it. Now how about the parallel one? If uh, we have this one and this one and then this one plus together and then we got like... But plus one. together with what it do, it would be like doing this plus together. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's not the real system. 
So yes, these are have the same temperature, but that still doesn't tell me. Like I can use both, and maybe I just want this state and then I want the other. But if I want to control y2, I maybe get also a state. I, there's multiple ways to do this, obviously. But if you want this same structure as this, you have to do parsing to get it into a serial. I mean, technically, this is this is the same, right? Yeah, it, uh, by mathematics, it, it is the same. So these are the same, but it's not in that format. It really depends on what you're trying to do. So if you now try to build a Luger observer with something that has one input and multiple outputs uh, in that way, you probably might not have any problems. Okay. Um, let's talk about V4. Have you tried V4? I know you have this right. Did you have problems with V4? Yeah, uh, it was coming Zen. What did Matt tell you when you tried V4? There's a problem with the refractory. Yeah, so it probably also tells, so you either make like a, um, an algebra loop problem or it, it tells you that the, the, first, um, the first parameter of the numerator should not be zero or something like that. So in multiple ways, uh, so what, what, first of all, what would be the idea? So what did you try to do before? So you have your normal system, right? You have your NSDLC. And you have, let's, let's do it for current. You have the PI, whatever you built. And what did you try to do here? What was your feed forward approach? Just in order so that you just can identify it from my step and I get it. So you did NSD of Z, you did minus one. I put it here on top, right? Yeah. So that this basically becomes a one. Right? That's what you need to try to do. Okay. Okay. What? So we can check the if we find the inverse of the NSV we have the actual system, then we have one Z down there. Yeah. Okay. So so that's so this is absolutely right, and I expect you to try to do this because that is what V4 tries to do with the system, right? The problem is that as DLC, the inverse in, uh, in discrete domain can cause problems. It can be unphysical, it can very, very often it's just not physical. Cause problems. Right, in our case, the NSTLC looks something like A1 T to the power A1 A1 Z to the minus 1 over 1 minus B1 Z to the minus 1, right? And it's basically the structure. So if I do NSTLC, it looks like this. And that's a problem, right? Why is that a problem? Because of that. 1 over z to the minus 1 is the same as saying time z, right? What is time z? It's the future. It means future, you cannot go into the future. You only can use the late ones. So they always will tell you that's not possible. I cannot do this. How am I supposed to look into A different way to look at this is if you were, if these two cancel one another, then this output and this input have to have the same value at all times. But how is that possible? I totally put to be one. How can the current uh, instantaneously change to one? Let's change infinitely fast. 
that's also physically not possible. Yeah. It already tells you this is not possible to do. You cannot do this. Okay? There's no way around it. You cannot make current change into instantaneously. It continues to make t is basically infinitely small, right? And then I can't tell it to jump somewhere because uh, the time set is so small. And I also, I never ask it to do a step. I tell it to be uh, 5, and then it chooses the amount of voltage, and depending on how much voltage I need for this, it will be just large. But this will be infinite. Because it has no time to change. Does that make sense? I mean, uh, if, if I change my current really fast, I usually, these also have to make physical sense, the, the trajectories. If you put it on feet forward, also continues to make a step. What will be the feet forward signal? Infinite, right? We have L times S. What's S times a step? That's like an impulse. We try to get infinite voltage for a very fast time. So the trajectories have to be also feasible. That also what this teaches you and what continues to make you teach you that the trajectories are important. So what I'm asking for has to be physical. I cannot ask for a step in current and expect the current to step. It's impossible. Yeah. Right? It's, that's just infeasible. So if you do this also in continuous domain, put a step on your command and you speed forward, you will see that it cannot work. Your voltage that it asks for is just infinitely big and that's just not right. right? We put a side wave on it and that's fine. It can be a side wave. That's physically possible. So it actually finds the voltage that reaches this physical possible current. But not a step. Okay? And this is basically always doing little steps, so it cannot instantly it also be the same. But don't you worry, we can do the feed forward. We just have to make sure we do it correctly. So Thought about that you 
could do. So now I direct this screen model and on the actual system. I delay my input current by one, and I use this as a transfer function. One minus V point one, one over A, and I put this to my system. And now I have a feed forward that should be okay. So let's do, for instance, a step real quick. I do two steps. And now I actually can ask for a step. I can ask for steps if it's the future current. Right? And let's see what our system looks like. So it's the continuous current. Let's look at the That's the sample one. So we ask for 10 goes there, we ask for 15 goes there. 